there's no question that, that us meeting on the boat that night um, you know, transformed both our lives. And it was very much the birth of Virgin. <laughs> Tubular Bells wasn't really a pioneer album. It popularised a form of music that had been touched on over the decades beforehand. And it certainly was revolutionary in that it went to number one in the UK and Australia and elsewhere, number three in the US. But even in the year it came out, earlier that year, Rick Wake, Wakeman's Six Wives of Henry VIII came out. And that too was a, an album length instrumental series of six pieces on the wives of Henry VIII. And there, there'd been others before that. In fact, on the moon in 1969, Neil Armstrong had a cassette player. They all did. And uh, he played Les Baxter's Music Out of the Moon, which is the third of a series of tracks from 1947. And when he, when he turned it off, uh, NASA Control said, thank you, Neil, for that. Um, the, there was also Mort Garson. Mort Garson put out a series of um, uh, instrumentals uh, using theremins uh, and later uh, Moog synthesizers. He did a, an album uh, in the late 60s uh, called Plantasia, Mother Earth's Plantasia. This was only given away at West Coast, US West Coast plant nurseries, so it was, there weren't many copies floating about, but it was rediscovered in the 80s. It's been released. It's quite a legendary record, but not a huge seller. It's interesting on Tubular Bells, all the instruments that are used, and you wonder, well, where are those tubular bells, those famous, infamous tubular bells that Mike Oldfield revolutionised music with? Well, they were broken. Tubular bells have hammers that have leather or soft plastic heads, uh, and he couldn't quite get the volume he needed. Keep in mind that a tubular bell is in the background of most orchestras. He wanted a really vibrant, vigorous sound. So they got an, a mallet, a, a, you know, a steel mallet, and banged the tubular bells to make those sounds with them. Of course, they broke them. Um, when he went to play live at the Queen's Elizabeth Hall in London at the end of 1973, encouraged by Mick Taylor, because he didn't want to play it live and thought he was unable to do so. Uh, they went there, Richard Branson booked the hall, the BBC was invited in to film it, and uh, they did a couple of run-throughs in the afternoon. And Oldfield was very unhappy with them. He thought there were too many mistakes. But the, the players thought that was OK, and that given how many players there were, about 15, and how many instrument changes there were, about 20, that you'd expect a few mistakes. Anyway, come showtime, uh, Oldfield, in tears, said to Richard Branson, I can't do it. I can't go on stage. It, it just won't work. And uh, Branson had driven there to the Queen Elizabeth Hall in his new Bentley, which uh, he bought, presumably, off the profits of Jubilee Bells. And he knew that Oldfield admired this Bentley. He said, if you go on stage and perform tonight, there's the keys, the Bentley's yours. They went on stage, Mick Taylor's guitar was out of tune. Uh, they overcame some of the shortcomings of rehearsals um, and it was a standing ovation from the moment they finished. And that gave birth to the form of music some people call New Age. And it really was a breakthrough, not so much in the music itself, but in the manner in which it popularised that music.